Proud on Six Men Day is Brianna here with the lovely and the beautiful Seven. Hello, girly. I'm so excited. This is the first time we're meeting, but I feel like we were just talking like off the mic. I feel yes. like we've met before. Yeah. Your I energy is so a, pure. It's a glam love. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a, a glam, glam love. love. You look we, amazing. We, you do too. And I feel like with women, as you were saying earlier, like we have to make sure that like our glam is right or else our day is not set the, the right no, way. You feel me? That is very true. My mama used to tell me whenever you're having a bad day, just go put on some lipstick and yes. put on a cute little dress and go have a day to yourself so yes. I'm like here for it and I feel yeah. like during the pandemic I was at home so much that I wasn't getting glammed up and I needed to do yeah. that do you feel like the same for you yeah I feel like for one we missed we missed our glam days yes. you know we really did but I will say like it was great for our skin because we didn't have to like that's right wearing a lot of makeup all the time it's like ooh, it's like yeah it's a know, lot it's, it's a, a lot. lot so I did enjoy like just being like bare face and just chilling like, right it was cool yeah, yeah same um so during the pandemic you know speaking of which like what were some things that you were doing because I feel like you know a lot of times I ask the artists like what were you guys up to and it's really interesting to like hear you all's answers and like what you were doing on uh, your free time it's probably so random for everybody for yeah. <laughs> every different artist but because we don't really like get a lot of free time to ourselves so right. it's like we were like wait we have like a whole year of do what you feel mm -hmm. create what you feel mm -hmm. write what you feel paint what you feel like draw what you feel so i think that for me personally um obviously like i you know i, I won't be as a uh, you know how do i say this and sensitive to to think that the pandemic was just this beautiful break that we got it was for a very serious reason yeah exactly you know what i mean like quarantine and us being safe and um i'm always like a glass half full if i gotta try to find a silver lining mm. i will say that for my my mental health and yeah. um, just for myself and get to know myself a little bit better me during uh during the pandemic i just i just wanted to learn me yeah more. And that was cool, and it manifested itself in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And what did that look like for you? Because you talked about mental health, and I'm such an advocate for that, especially, like, for our people, for black and brown community. Mm -hmm. So what did that look like for you? Is that, like, therapy? Was that journaling, mm -hmm. music, it all was, the above? It was a lot. It yeah. was all definitely all of the above. Um, I haven't tapped back into therapy, and mm -hmm. I've gone before, but I want to go back again, um, start it up again. But for me... Uh, it just looked like waking up earlier, early in the morning before anybody could like disrupt mm -hmm. my day. Yeah. And I had to set my day and set my intentions and be mm -hmm. like, okay, God, what is it that we want to, you know, talk about, express ourselves, accomplish right. today? So I would wake up, watch my sermons, I would go outside, I would stretch, I would meditate, I would journal, mm. you know what I mean? Like I would, I would smoke a little something <laughs> and you know what I mean? Just be one with myself and just, yeah. um, just figure out who was seven today mm -hmm. yeah so do you feel like the seven before the pandemic is different than the seven now yeah the seven from um you know like i haven't put out music in what three four years mm -hmm. so um people always ask what were you doing during this time what were you doing and the seven that um gave you girl disrupted which i love that project yeah is completely different from the girl that gave you drunken words sober thoughts yeah um and it's because we're people you know a lot has happened over the last couple of years mm -hmm. you know um i you know i'm very vocal about the fact i lost one of my favorite uncles to cancer mm. and it ripped me and tore me to shreds to pieces and it shifted me forever mm -hmm. so that was that and being with my family and um still creating within that process and then you know us being women and dating and that whole type of thing and yeah. being in a relationship going through a breakup so right. writing about that um and then cultivating uh my relationships with my girlfriends like mm, that's you know we had a lot of time during a uh, pandemic hey what are you doing come over let's just sit on the couch and talk yeah you know what i mean and we were still being very safe and all of that but um it was cool and then my relationship with myself mm -hmm. you know what i mean most important most <laughs> most important right so it was it was all of that for me yeah yeah so um you said that you went through a breakup what well, was that like during the pandemic uh, it was a little bit before okay um over the last like three four years i was in a relationship and then went through a breakup and yeah. um started to date again so it's like it's been a little minute since i was in a relationship but right. um nevertheless i still write from every experience i go mm -hmm. through and um it's a lot of that on the project too and you've written for so many artists which yeah. you're such a like a goat for that i Thank mean chris you. brown trey songs the list goes on and on what has been like or who has been your favorite artist that you've worked with oh favorite artist that's hard <laughs> um Favorite artist? I mean, 
I don't really have a favorite. Mm-hmm. I just I just like the different experiences I was able to have. Like for mm-hmm. one, I've been obsessed with Brandy my entire life. So yeah. to be able to write slower with Chris for mm-hmm. Brandy and her walk in the studio and actually hear the song like the song, cut the song, it, that was like I converted back to like child childhood me with yeah. the posters on the wall. Yeah. So that was amazing. So that I'll never forget that. And then writing, obviously, anytime I get to write and work with Chris is amazing because mm-hmm. his art never puts you in a box and mm. I love that freedom yeah and um and that freedom actually feeds me in a lot of different ways too because mm-hmm. when I go to approach my own projects I kind of take the same approach you know yeah. I don't like to put myself in a box so um favorites it's hard to pick <laughs> but you know working with Chris is great working with Brandy was great mm-hmm. working with Alicia Keys is amazing so yeah. They're just all, like, massive talents. That's How cool. was it working with Alicia Keys? You know, a uh, little secret of mine. So mm-hmm. I learned to play piano was when I was in, like, first grade nice. because I wanted to be Alicia Keys. I oh, felt like there weren't a lot of artists that looked like us. Yeah. So, like, I wore braids, I played piano, and I just looked up to her because I was, like, wow. finally someone who, like, looks like us. Representation you know I mean? is yes. everything, and yeah. that's really, really fire. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, black people, brown people, we come in so many different shades and all that different type of things. So I think that I think that that's amazing. You know what right. I mean? Um, Alicia is. I mean, uh, it's Alicia Keys. She's like <laughs> the iconic Alicia yes. Keys, and um, she is just as warm and sweet and genuine as she comes off mm-hmm. um, in person. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So um, I, I don't know. I, I think working with her, we initially started working through um, over like it was like a Zoom in the beginning yeah and then um i ended up going to new york and working with her a little bit more then so i just love her and i think that she's amazing so what were those conversations like with alicia keys like Um, any advice that she gave you well i think that people and artists like alicia they kind of they first of all they lead with just with just genuine pureness like just joy yeah she leads with that and um it's i just always felt so comfortable creating whatever came from my soul when I'm mm. working with her. Um, and and her, she's the same way. Swiss is the same way. I just It's just always so much positivity mm-hmm. that, um, I don't know, your, your creativity kind of just, it gets to float around and yeah. be. And you don't get that in every situation that you work with. Right. No. Um, has there ever been an artist that you work with that you were just like, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe I'm working <laughs> with this person right now? <laughs> Let me see. I mean, all of them, for one. Definitely right. all of them. Um, but there were moments, like for me, I think uh, writing for the Fast and Furious 7 soundtrack was a really big deal for me. Because mm-hmm. it was the first time that I could go to the movies with my family and my parents. Yeah. And we're sitting there watching Fast and Furious and like... <laughs> my song comes on and it's and that was like you know that was a really big like bucket list moment because i'm like whoa like this is a a soundtrack and then Mm -hmm. it was fast and furious seven and seven so i was like oh thank you god that was like a little appreciate it you know (laughs) yeah so it was you know it was a it was a good time has there uh is there an artist that you want to work with that you haven't yet Mm, there are a couple. I mm-hmm. would love to work with Miguel. Ooh. I would love to work with uh, with Silk Sonic. Oh, okay. I love, I love them. I would yes. love to work with with Drake. I love to work with Drake. Um, yeah, like I, I like and the reason that and I have a whole bucket list like of people, but mm-hmm. I like uh, I like the conversation between men and women on records. Mm. I think it sparks like really dope like actual conversations yeah, amongst people exactly. it, little debates and like mm-hmm. little well you know you know females we feel like this and men like well we feel like this so i like that kind of um that conversation in record so yeah I think do you feel like fun. it's difficult you know like you know speaking or i guess ghostwriting for like a male artist because you are a woman yeah. and you have your own female experiences and yeah. trying to like live through them is that difficult for you at all um you know what Actually, no, only because I write and work with so many men. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times when they think that my head is just down and mommy are just chilling, I get to hear all of the conversations, you Ooh, guys. the tea. So I get to hear all the tea. And um, <laughs> this is my rappers over there in the corner like, listen, shut up, Brandon. Um, <laughs> but no, I, it's the fun part. I, right. I, I like to sit and chill and like listen and then a lot of times I jump in the conversations with them so uh-huh. I've been working with and with, writing with men for so many years that um, even though clearly we will never understand the level of Mars that they are yeah. from nor do we want to try nor do we want to try 
Okay? <laughs> but um, it is nice to be able to tap in uh, to, to that energy sometimes and vice yeah. versa because I get to also say, well, as women in a room mm-hmm. full of, you know, men, male writers, that this is how we feel. This is yes. what we think. This is what we want. What changed that line? Because we would not like yeah. that. You know what I mean? So that's cool. You know? Okay, that's dope. Yeah. And I love the, uh, the album title. So Drunken Words, Sober Thoughts. Yes. Have you ever sent that, like, drunk text that you were just like, oh, why did I send Girl, that? Girl, <laughs> come on now. First of all, we've all sent that drunk text. Yeah. And if you haven't, keep living, okay? <laughs> Period. Just keep living. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say to you. Keep living. Because, yeah. um, you know, tequila will make you do some crazy things. Girl, that's the drink. That's I don't a, know what it is about tequila, tequila, but that's the one. Tequila turn you into a different person. You know, but have I? Absolutely. I've sent yeah. a text, and then you wake up the next morning and be like, like why? But do you react to that <laughs> drunk text? Um, well, <laughs> this is the thing. thing. <laughs> it's so funny. One time I um I I text somebody and then I I read something recently that was like a, you know if if I drunk text you and you and you mix the, you miss the text um the next morning you know that it's like a null and void text like yeah. just. Just know that that text never came. Like, I don't know who sent it. It didn't come from me. So you missed you missed your moment. Right. But you know what I mean? Yes. It happens like that sometimes. Well, you have a queen on the album, Bia, which I yes, absolutely ma'am. love. I, I love that song. Too. How did that collaboration come yeah. about? Because when I saw that she was on the album, I was like, yes. Because she's so fire. Yes, yeah, she is. She fire. She spit fire shit. Like, she just, like, it's her confidence for me. Yeah. It's her tone of her voice. Mm-hmm. Um and I like that she's she says things that we all think, but she words them so fire to mm-hmm. me. And with Nasty Girl, Nasty Girl was produced by my actual brother. His name is T wow. Street, so okay. shout out Jay, yes. um, T Street, and Charlie Heat, so shout out Charlie. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it was just one of those records where I think I had a couple, uh, gl- you know, shots of tequila <laughs> in my system that night, and um, I was like, I just wanted to like <laughs> pop some shit because you yeah. know, as women, like. That particular record, Nasty Girl, it's sexy. It's mm-hmm. confident. You feel like a boss-ass bitch. You yeah. want to get dressed and do your glam and get your makeup on. Yeah. And, you know, get cute with your girlfriends. And mm-hmm. I, I like for women to feel like that. Mm-hmm. And um, we have a million records of men. that like, Men get to pop their shit all the, time. all the time. So I was like, why can't we pop ours? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, to put Bia on it, it just yeah. was like the cherry on top. And yeah. She went crazy. And to see, like, her career take off, too, because I first met her actually through Instagram, like, Mm -hmm. live. We did an interview, and then, like, that was during the pandemic, and then, like, a few months later, the world opened back up, and she's, like... Out of here. With Nicki Minaj, doing her thing. I'm like, yes, I love seeing our girls win. Yeah, and she's just, she's so talented, and she's been doing it for a very long Mm -hmm. time, and it's like, I just be happy for anybody, especially any female, especially any black female Mm -hmm. that's, like, resilient and, Mm -hmm. like, really, like, you know, just refuses to stop. I'm like, yeah, we all got to, we just got to keep going and keep going crazy. And I love how you talk about her just like you should be talking about yourself because you've been in the game for so, so long. And we just, we value that, we appreciate that, and we see that. And I love the visuals that you have with Jeremiah, the song Wet Dreams. Yeah, a little sexy, little sign, sign, little sexy. You know, you got to do it for us real quick. (laughs) Yeah. So how did that come about? Uh, Wet Dreams is a beautiful record. Mm -hmm. Shout out Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a beautiful record. It's produced by Business Boy. Yeah. And, oh, Biz. Mm-hmm, you know, by- first of all, he's a super <laughs> slept on. People don't know listen, who he is, and he's killing it. Read, listen here. I know we can't open up, you know, uh, binders, uh, open up packages and read the credits anymore, but people, please do your research. Yes. Because he's super fire. He and is. he's been fire. And he's probably done way more records than everybody even realized. He's and he's actually insane. producing them. Yeah. He's fire. <laughs> right. And he's gonna send me a pack he's gonna send me a pack every week regardless if I ask for it or not. Wow. And um I really appreciate that. But he produced Wet Dreams mm-hmm. and um I wrote it with a friend of mine named Drew Love. He's mm-hmm. from the group They yeah. and um Oh I love that group. Right. Yeah. They're amazing. Uh-huh. Amazing. And um yeah, I mean I was working with my, my produce well, my engineer slash A and R. His name is JP. Shout out JP. Yeah. And um we were working one night in business in a pack. And every r- record that I wrote, like, it was trash. Mm. And I didn't, like, <laughs> I didn't like them. Every record was trash. I was like, no. I was like, pull up another one. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, no, pull up another one. <laughs> and so finally I was like, all right, JP, 
pull up one more beat and I, if I don't like this one we going to sleep it's a, we, it's a rap yeah, and he pulled up the Wet Dreams beat mm-hmm. and I loved it and I ended up writing I think like the first verse in the B section and some of the hook that night and then I called Drew the next day I was like Drew you gotta come over here and finish this with me. You gotta come crazy. Yeah. He went, and he came over. What time was it? Uh, he came the next evening. Oh, okay. So it like I <laughs> like worked late. later to the night right. trying to find a vibe, and mm-hmm. then he came the next day, and we finished it. And we called Jay. We were like, because Jay only lives like fifteen minutes down the road from me. I was like, Yo, we about to pull up. We we got <laughs> one. And he was like, All right, pull up. So yeah. we get there. He hears a record. He go goes crazy. He does what he does, mm-hmm. and um, it just it turned out kind of magical and i really do love that record so. yeah where did you guys shoot that video because it's like on the beach girl we shot that in the desert it was cold as hell it lo- i was like <laughs> it looked so warm oh Thank you. i'm glad it looked all warm and spicy and hot and shit but yeah. it was cold and it's watery crazy. it's crazy how like artists <laughs> like it'll look like something but like in reality it's like freezing girl, out there. i was on set like who why the hell did I have this bright eyes idea to be wet in the desert yes. with water? And, but it was yeah. worth it. It was, it worth, was it. worth it. It was worth now, it. Now, my favorite record on the album with is the one with Lavish. Oh, I didn't even know who you. Lavish was, but that sound, I feel like, is a completely different sound for you. Mm-hmm. So I would love for you to just dig into that, that well, song. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And it's so funny. That's actually one of my favorite records, too. Oh, okay, and <laughs> Yes, yes, we hear. It was one of my favorites because um, of exactly what you just said. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I write so many different types of records. And I know that, like, my foundation is definitely R&B. It will always be R&B. Mm-hmm. But I love alternative records. I yeah. love um, big ballads. Big, right. You know, I used to love big Celine Dion records Mm and um, I love all those kind of records so for me I wanted to I've always wanted to find my own personal hybrid Mm -hmm. and I think that that's what this album is a lot for me it's a lot of little hybrids if you listen to them it's Mm -hmm. like the foundations are a little urban and it's me but then you know the other things are a little alternative so with forever um, I ended up meeting Chubbs and uh, at, at a Diddy party and okay. yeah, shout out to Lorianne Gibson. She was like, <laughs> she was like, have you met, have you met Jobs? And I was like, no, not yet. So we met, talked about music, and he was like, yo, you know, come over, you guys come play music, let's hear the album. I was like, cool. Mm-hmm. So in over, um, going to the studio, and I met Lavish that day. They introduced me to Lavish, and they played his music, and I'm not even gonna hold you. It's some of the best music that I have ever heard. Wow, because he's so deep. versatile. Um, his voice is just amazing, and he can kind of do whatever he wants with it, mm. which is really fire. Mm-hmm. And um, that very same day, um, we ended up writing forever. Who did the beat? Is Sa- it's Sammy, and um, I'm, I'm bad with names, but mm-hmm. amazing, amazing producers, Sammy and Lavish and their whole crew, and um. They we heard the beat. They were making the beat, and we were in the other room, like listening to another mm-hmm. record. And we were like, "Yo, what is that? <laughs> what is that?" <laughs> and we poked our little heads out, and um, they were in there going crazy. And so we ended up writing the record the same day that we all met. Wow. And um, that's how Forever came about. And I just love that song. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I've honestly listened to it on repeat, and not even gonna lie. And I'm just like, because it's just so different, you know? And like, Thank I was you. talking to Lil Nas X yesterday, I, I interviewed him, mm-hmm. and my favorite record on his album is kind of like the same, it's like an alternative sound. I love when yeah. artists do something a little bit different than yeah. what they're like typically used to. So, yeah. like, I appreciate you, like, taking that chance, you know? I appreciate you, uh, like, not trying to pigeonhole me into one version of myself. No. Yeah. Yeah, like, thank of course. You for that. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. Now, what do you want people to feel like when they listen to this album? Um, I want them to feel whatever they want to feel. I want them to feel heard. I want them to feel seen. Mm-hmm. I want them to listen to the songs and um, cause like I, I say all the time, people don't always know how to express themselves. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to say you hurt me or I'm sorry mm-hmm. or I'm jealous or I'm angry. Or, you know, I'm freaky or, you know, I'm lustful <laughs> or I'm, I feel sexual. Yeah. They don't necessarily know how to express it all the time. So when mm-hmm. I write songs, I literally, I, I write them, um, you know, as a, you know, as a, as a tool for people. Like mm-hmm. here, like press, press play on this song. If you don't know how you feel, press play on this song, <clears> you know. Um, so that's what I want them to feel. Mm-hmm. I want them to hear songs, let's say, like Change My Mind. Um, for women, it's a very, you know, 
sexual, mm-hmm. like, you know, freeing kind of record. It's like, okay, when we're really comfortable with someone, we might let them change our little minds about some things. Know, you feel right. me? You know? <laughs> so, like, I want women yeah. to have that level of expression. Um, and then when you hear songs, let's see... Um, like Taboo, for example. Mm-hmm. I love Taboo. Yeah. Um, Taboo was produced by D-Mile, written by Mike, Mike Microphone. I'm about to call him his Instagram name. <laughs> Mike Powell, uh, Eric Dawkins, Vincent Berry, um, myself, and my engineer, uh, ANRJP, mm-hmm. and D-Mile. And um, that record is just speaking. You know, sometimes when we get into situations and they're too good to be true, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, what's wrong? Yeah, What's going to go wrong? As opposed to saying, you know what? Too good doesn't have to be taboo. Why mm. can't I just want to be with you? Why can't you just want to be with me too? So, yeah. like, records like that, I feel like, you know, a lot of us have gone through that. And mm-hmm. like I said, if you haven't, keep living. <laughs> keep living. Um, but records like that, uh, you know, taboo can express that. So it's a whole different ranges of, of expression on the album. But yeah, I want I them to, feel. yeah, pick what you feel and let it lead you track. Yeah. Yes. Now, what's next, Seven? I feel like you do so much. You're a singer, you're a dancer, you're a writer. I mean, you literally do it all. And I was just talking to Eric Bellinger. He's a good friend of mine. I know yes. he's a great friend of yours. Yes. And he always talks about you. So, like, I would just yeah. love to, like, give you your flowers and just, like, let you know, like, what's what's next? Thank Tell us. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, a few different things are next for me. For one, my baby is definitely drunk and we're sober thoughts. Yeah. And so we're talking about tour now. I can't wait to get on the road That's and exciting. go on tour because I miss my my street team. Yes. I really miss them, so that's going to be fun. I have a docu-series in the works that that's I'm excited dope. about that kind of um, explains how I balance my, my two worlds because of what mm. a lot of people don't really know. Like, you know, I live in L.A., I live in Woodland Hills. Um, you know, I'm always, it's video shoots and recording and, um, you know, partying with my friends yeah. or, um, you know, a lot of work-based things and, that type, and that's my world here. But when I go home to Florida... I'm from Haines City, Florida. I'm country as hell. <laughs> I got seven houses of relatives on one street. I don't like to wear shoes from house to house. I like, I'm a whole Good country little little something. And um, the docu series is gonna ex- express that. You know, I had 23 cousins at my high school at one time, and my wow. family we are still extremely close. Every Sunday, Sunday dinners at my grandma's house. I love that to this day. So yeah. the docu series, I want fans to really be able to kind of come into my little world a little bit. So. That's cool. And then mm-hmm. um, just filmed a, a show with, uh, with BT and Paula Patton. That was a lot of fun. Amazing. So it's just fun things, you know, fun things. But most importantly, drunken words over thoughts and yeah. giving the fans more visuals. You know, we have a we may have a little uh, Nasty Girl be a visual on the way. Ooh, I'm and excited. That's a little, it's a little nasty. What is that going to look like? It's going to look like a whole lot of nasty. <laughs> A whole lot of money and a whole lot of nasty. A whole lot of nasty. You know, a whole lot of grown and sexy. You know, love that girl. Listen, feminism and you know all that, all of the, all the goodness. You know, and that's Um, what we need. That's what we need. You know, so I'm excited about that. And then um, we um, we're probably more than likely definitely going to do and shoot a video for Taboo. Okay. So um, so you're busy. That's what that's yeah. what the end of that is. <laughs> She's yeah. busy. Okay. A little bit. Little little working. Bit. Okay. That's how you're supposed to end the last quarter. Is just finishing off with like a bang. Yeah. It's been a. It's been a. We were talking about this earlier today. It's been a really like, you know, insane year for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, coming out of 2020, I, I don't think anyone really knew what this year was gonna entail like what i think everybody's like okay we're back outside and everybody is just learning and moving Mm -hmm. and pivoting and like and and i think that overall um i i'm how do i explain it overall i just really feel like um it's I will say for me, it's it's been a good year in that sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like my my fans have kind of allowed me to kind of slowly ease in back in the way that I feel most comfortable, mm. and um, they've been very receptive, and I really appreciate that because just like them, I went through a lot during the pandemic mm-hmm. too. You know what I mean? We all have. So um, this year has been good, and it does feel great to be able to like kind of cap it off with giving them 
more music and mm-hmm. because they've been very supportive and patient with me, you know? I feel like people, too, like fans, they kind of forget sometimes you are human. <laughs> you go yeah. through things in life. And yeah. I think it's just important for them to just, like you said, they've been very patient. Yeah. we all been very patient. I'm not going to lie. I go on SoundCloud to listen to your songs sometimes, oh, like you. your old stuff, just because, like, I've always appreciated your sound. It's very thank different, you. you know? And so, like I said, I just, I'm, I'm grateful that you're here and to thank be able you. to give you your flowers. And before you leave, is there anything that we missed that we didn't touch on that you would love to talk about? Um, is there anything that we missed? Uh, I just, no, I just, I'm just honestly drunk and word sober thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> because you know the thing, it really is. That's like, yeah. that's been my baby for, right. and I've been dying to to give the baby to, to my kids. Yes. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I just really want them to really dive into this project and, to kind of um, just to learn me now, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a it's a different me, and um, I will say this: uh, I I love them and I appreciate them for understanding that. But every project that they get from here on out, um, just don't expect for them to ever sound the same. Mm. Um, don't expect for me to ever be the same version of myself. Um, because you know, recently a fan said to me, "Oh, say you know, I, I like this new project, but I like the old stuff." better and it was a something that they said to me and I said well I said are you the same person you were from five years ago and they said absolutely not and exactly it's the same thing with with music and creating especially writing music um I write from from experiences whether they're my real life experiences or someone else's but my view and my take on those things from five years ago to now and from now till two you know two years down the road they won't be the same mm-hmm. so um, I love that response, by the way. <laughs> you know, but I pre I appreciate yeah. um, even just the conversation. So I, I'll just leave my my fans and my street team with that. I mm-hmm. appreciate the um, patience and allow me to become this version of myself and then the next time I put another project it'll be a different version of myself exactly so. it's levels to this <laughs> go stream drunken words uh, sober dr- thoughts there we go yes. period okay <laughs> thank you thanks mama. girl I appreciate it so much 